Hello friends, welcome back. We have been learning the foundations of the cognitive computing and I hope you understood the fundamentals well. In this session, we are going to understand how artificial intelligence plays a role as the foundation for the cognitive computing. There are so many scientists, mathematicians, even economists who have played a major role in laying the foundation for artificial intelligence, which now is the base for cognitive computing. Let's understand all of that and this is going to be an interesting session. Well, let's answer a simple question. Which is the golden era for computing? No doubt we are living in that golden era and when has it started? It all started almost about 50 years before. Many scientists, mathematicians, they came hand in hand, they worked together to mimic the neurons to large constructs and models. It's very important progress that they have made and the aim that they had is to mimic the human performance. The progress is towards making machines think like humans. Alan Turing, whom we call as father of AI, yes, he is the real father of AI, was lauded by Winston Churchill for his critical work on cryptography during World War II. He is an amazing scientist and he has contributed a lot. He did not stop just with cryptography. He worked on machine learning in 1940s. Yes, believe me, he has started machine learning thought process in 1940. He did publish articles and one such article, Computing Machinery and Intelligence, published in Mind, the journal from UK, he has quoted clearly, Can Machines Think? This is the start. This is the real start where people even started thinking about Can Machines Think? He was ideally the first person, yes, he was the one to start this. He actually dismissed and disregarded the thought that the machines can never think. He also argued and defended the fact that machines can think and it will happen very soon by that time. Believe me, 1940, someone talking about machines thinking is a great thing. And he cited the digital computing advancements could lay path for all these developments. And this is the amazing start that we have had through Alan Turing. And he did not stop there. He made significant strides in the field of artificial intelligence. In 1950s, he published a landmark paper which is even now regarded as the best computing machinery and intelligence where he proposed the most famous Turing test. It is an assessment of a machine's ability to exhibit human-like intelligence. I repeat, it is a very famous paper and here is where he has proposed an assessment of a machine's ability to exhibit human-like intelligence. The Turing test was fundamentally proposed in the year 1950, as I have already recollected, is a test of a machine's ability to exhibit human-like intelligence. The test is very simple. The test is designed to determine if a computer or any AA system can mimic human conversation well enough to be indistinguishable from the human participant. The basic idea is very simple. An evaluator will engage in a conversation with a human and a machine through a computer interface without knowing which is which. The evaluator will not know which is human and which is machine. If the evaluator cannot reliably distinguish between the human and the machine based on the conversation, then the machine is said to have won the test. It has passed the Turing test and is considered to have exhibited the intelligent behavior. So the evaluator is going to interact with the machine and with the human. If the evaluator is not able to distinguish which is human, which is machine, the machine has won. See the thought. By 1950s, somebody is conducting this kind of test and that's what is laying the foundation for everything that we have got today. So undoubtedly, he is father of A. There is one more legend, Norbert Werner. He is an American mathematician and a philosopher as well, known for his significant contributions in the fields of mathematics, engineering and cybernetics. The term cybernetics comes up first time for the discussion in the entire playlist that we have today. Cybernetics or Control and Communication in Animal and the Machine is the book, a very famous book written by this person and is first published in the year 1948. 1948 he has published this book and it's a work where the term cybernetics was first introduced and it laid the foundation for the interdisciplinary study of communication and control systems in both living organisms and machines. Remember, this is where the foundation was laid for interdisciplinary study. 
we are talking about interdisciplinary projects these days and this guy has done it in 1948. The term cybernetics is very interesting. It's derived from the Greek word called as kybernetes, which means statesman or governor. In the context of the book, particularly very specific to the book, cybernetics refers to the study of systems that are self-regulating and self-controlling, drawing parallels between biological, mechanical and social system. It's most self-regulated. It's self-controlled. So that's what cybernetics refer to. In the cybernetics, Wiener explores the concept of feedback and its importance in maintaining stability and adaptive behavior in various systems. First time we are introducing the word feedback as well into it and that's what the modern AI systems today are following. He also argues that the feedback loops play a most crucial role in the control and communication of information within a system, whether it's a human or artificial machine. So his research and theories had a very strong influence on the development of the field of AI. So it's still supporting us. We are building systems with reinforcement learning, which is fundamentally based on the feedback that the system is getting and the system is correcting itself. For a simple instance, you are playing chess game with the computer which is powered by AI. You are playing very well and you have won the first game against the computer. Second game also you have won. The computer, I mean the AI driven engine, will learn from its mistakes. That's the feedback and third time it will win. It can even predict. So that's what this person has referred way back in 1950s. So this is an amazing thought from one more legend that we have discussed. Now we are getting into another person, Arthur Lee Samuel, who is a researcher and he worked with IBM as well and he has developed one of the earliest examples in the AI. He is credited for developing the first self-learning program for playing checkers. Believe me, he developed checkers game in the year 1959 and that had the self-learning ability. He created the first computer program which was capable of learning from its own experience by playing checkers against itself. It is not playing against a person. It played against itself and it evolved. Using a technique which we are very much familiar with these days, adaptive learning which was very new then, the program which was named after his name, Samuel Checkers Playing Program, gradually got improved its gaming gaming abilities, its playing abilities through trial and error methods and it redefined the strategies and learning from the past games were used for defining the strategies. The Samuel Checkers playing program was very groundbreaking innovation at that time and it demonstrated a matter of fact that computers could be programmed to learn and adapt without explicit human intervention and they can learn. So the point that the computers can learn was given very strongly here as an observation. This is the groundwork for development of machine learning and further we are now here today with more advancements into deep learning, NLP, NLG, NLU, chat GPT, LLM, all those things. So this is the foundation. So all these people who have worked in the pre a era laid the foundation for whatever we have today as AI and that's what is connecting us to cognitive computing. And many people worked hard to bring it to the level that we are in today. In 1956, there was a conference which held in New Hampshire and that helped to define the field of AI. The participants included the most important and the most prominent researchers by then, including Alan Neville, Herbert A. Simon of Carnegie Mellon Technology and John McCarthy. All these people were stalwarts by then. They were the people who laid the foundation further stronger. In their proposal at the event, McCarthy uh, outlined the fundamental concept that influenced AI research for decades. Every aspect of learning or any other feature of intelligence can in principle be so precisely described that a machine can be made to simulate it. This was the core statement that he made. I will repeat it. Every aspect of learning or any other feature of intelligence can in principle be so precisely described that a machine can be made to simulate it. See the thought. 1960s, these people have done wonders and today we are utilizing it and we are growing. The list is further extending. We have got Herbert Simon uh, who is a very famous A guy again by that time. He assumed it in a very interesting way and he assumed that it is relatively easy to find a way to represent knowledge as an information system. The knowledge as an information system is a new line that we are driving right now, is a new line that we are drawing right now. He contended that the transition to AA could be accomplished by simple adapting rules based on changing requirements. Simon and his team assumed that 
simple adaptive mechanism would allow intelligence to be captured to create intelligent machine this is a most important observation his team very strongly believed and they assumed that a simple adaptive mechanism would allow intelligence to be captured to create an intelligent machine so all these are the foundations that we are utilizing today and we have to appreciate it have we heard of the expert systems that's the next level an expert system is nothing but a type of an artificial intelligence program that aims to mimic decision making abilities of a human expert in a specific domain or field i repeat it we are defining a new thing here expert system it's a subfield of artificial intelligence that's main aim is to mimic the decision making abilities of a human expert in a particular domain or field expert system consists of two components one is knowledge base another one is inference engine knowledge base is the place where the system stores a vast amount of domain specific knowledge fact rules heuristics everything the knowledge base is developed by experts in the respective field and this serves as the foundation or the base for the system's decision making progress this is where everything is collected together the knowledge is all here inference engine is the next one which is useful as a reasoning component of the expert system it uses the knowledge which is stored in the knowledge base to make decisions to draw conclusions and importantly to provide solutions to the problem the inference engine applies rules algorithms and decision making techniques to generate appropriate output so i have introduced you to the term expert system and two major components of this are knowledge base and inference engine i hope it was clear and expert systems for, are further categorized into two types one is rule based second one is knowledge based rule based systems use a set of predefined rules and guidelines to guide their decision making process rules are typically in the form of very simple if then statement if certain symptoms are observed in a medical context then the system can suggest certain potential diagnosis method and it can even give you treatment suggestions knowledge based systems on the other side use more of complex representation of the knowledge including the fact the relationship various forms of reasoning all this will be clubbed together they often employ techniques as semantic networks frames or ontologies to model knowledge in a more flexible and structured manner so remember there are two components one is knowledge based another one is inference engine there are two types one is rule based and second one is knowledge based i hope it was interesting and it was informative too so finally a is focused on determining how to represent knowledge in a way that the data can be manipulated so that people can make inferences from the knowledge i have a large volume of data i have large amount of knowledge used to understand the data but what is that i infer out of it is most important the field has been evolving over past 3 or 4 decades at least today most of the focus is on the area of machine learning algorithms that provide mechanisms to allow computers to process data in a much meta methodological way but much of the focus on the machine learning is dealing with ambiguity because most of the data that we have today is unstructured and open to many different interpretations all these are to be remembered so the way things have grown from where it was to where it is and where it will be is discussed very clearly in this quick and concise session and i'll meet you in the next session shortly